Hello out there to you. In this mo uh, problem, we're going to do a model where we're going to try to make collusion possible and thinking about the future value versus the present value. So I'm going to make a copy of this game right here so I can write on it and see what the competitive equilibrium is. So here I've got a player one, player two. I've got two different strategies. Well, they're the same strategy for either player. I've got collude or cheat. Uh, so let's solve the game for the competitive equilibrium real quick. So player two colludes. What's player one better off doing? They're better off cheating. Player two, uh, if they cheat, it's better for player one to also cheat. This is known as its dominant strategy because they're going to cheat regardless of what the other player is going to do. Then player two, uh, if player one colludes, what's better for player two? They're going to cheat. And then if player two, player one cheats, player two is also going to cheat. They also have a dominant strategy. And this is the Nash equilibrium. It's also the dominant strategies equilibrium. And so both players know this, and they know that collusion is not a stable. Collude, collude is not a stable outcome. But if both players were thinking about it uh, rationally and into the future, thinking, considering what a, a grim trigger strategy would be, what that term means is uh, a strategy where as soon as one player does that behavior, the other player is going to match that behavior basically forever. So once once the trust is destroyed, in other words, the trust is never going to be uh, returned. Okay, So if, if uh, both players were to pl both play collude on the first try, they could uh, rationally decide that maybe they would uh, continue that going if the va the discount factor the discount of the present value uh, is higher than the the future value of cheating okay so let's set this up like this okay so uh, future value of cheating once is five okay so that's our that's what we're trying to beat okay we're trying to beat five uh, and then the formula is the payout uh, for collusion, so the present value of that payout uh, divided by one minus the discount rate, and then in in this problem, let's just do it with one period. So we'll just do one period here. Uh, makes it a little easier, but you could do an infinite uh, number of periods there if you wanted to. I suppose that is the way to think about it, but it, it doesn't matter whether it's next period or infinity because the result is always going to be the same. We're always going to go back to that. Nash equilibrium, which is the prisoner's dilemma outcome, and it's the worst for both players. So let's just solve for D, and this is going to be the value of the discount rate that um, we'll need to see at least this rate in order to uh, get us to collude. So we'll be just going to rearrange some stuff. And I'm going to take this up here and multiply. So 5 minus 5D. Okay, and then Send this over here, 5D is 1, D is 1 fifth, which is like saying 0.2, which is like saying 20%. So if the discount factor, or the discount rate is 20% uh, or higher, then it's better off to uh, collude. Okay, with that pretty high discount rate. So that's how to solve that. So you just put, just take for the formula, take whatever the good payout is, divide it by one minus the uh, discount rate, discount factor, uh, put that for how many periods, and then that needs to be equal then or greater to the, the good outcome, the good result.